Okay. In this video, I will show you how you can measure CO2 levels in the air, why I do it, and how exactly the sensor works. We humans and we animals breathe. And when we breathe, then we take in oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide. And that's exactly what we're going to measure. And if we're outside, that's fine. That's not a problem. Inside is a problem because if we're now in a building, then of course the amount of air is limited. Our oxygen goes down, carbon dioxide goes up. And if this happens, then we can't concentrate and we get tired and it's bad. This especially happens when a lot of people are in a room. In order to reduce the CO2 level, you open the windows. And that's why CO2 sensors found its way into smart homes. They give you an indication of the air quality and so the ventilation system uses a CO2 sensor to optimize the airflow. In order to measure CO2, you can use sensors like this MHZ19B. They are called NDIR sensors, non-dispersive infrared sensors. And the basic principle is you have this enclosure and air can pass through the enclosure so it, it has two holes there's a second hole here and air passes through these holes and so there is constant airflow inside of the sensor which is important because we want to measure the air quality in the room so it needs to go into the sensor well great so we have a sensor and we have air exchange so the co2 level inside of the sensor represents the co2 level inside of the room that's fine but how exactly does it now measure the co2 these sensors make use of infrared absorption co2 absorbs infrared radiation so inside of this chamber how it works is on one side you have a light emitter the interesting part is I was very surprised that I see the light inside of the sensor. I thought that there is an infrared diode inside, but the wavelength of the infrared spectrum is very wide. Infrared diodes usually work in the upper spectrum, very close to the visible light. This application requires infrared radiation that is lower than that. And there are infrared lasers that can produce this wavelength. They are much more expensive than an incandescent light bulb. And that's exactly why they're using this light bulb inside of the sensor right here. So this is emitting light. And on the other side, you have a photodiode and the photodiode can measure the brightness. The more CO2 goes into this chamber, the less light goes through. However, we only care about a specific wavelength because otherwise we would measure all of these gases and we're only interested in carbon dioxide. What we do is we add a filter here and it blocks the rest and only lets through the specific wavelength that we're interested in. And so we get a clear signal and then after calibrating it, it gives you a great indication of how much CO2 level is in the air. Every few seconds, this incandescent light bulb inside of the sensor turns on and the amount of light is measured and therefore we can find out the absorption rate of the gas inside of the chamber. And in order to prevent dirt from coming in, you also have an air filter at the intake. There's this white stuff right here. And if we take a look at the data sheet, it runs on 5 volts and it has multiple output signals. It has a yurt, it has a pulse width modulated output and also an analog output. The interface level is 3.3 volts, but it's also compatible with 5 volts. So we can connect it to our Arduino Uno. I will use the blue wire for ground and ground is called V minus. And I will use the brown wire for our 5 volts. I'll grab this 5 volts and connect it to VN. UART data output. So TX 
tx d. So this is now a UART signal. And the question is, where should I connect it to? Arduino Uno only has one UART. And this one UART is connected to my MacBook. And what I can do is I connect it to pin two, or I don't. Let's see. <laughs> um, I can connect it to pin two and then use soft serial, which is an emulated UART. What's the first thing if you have a sensor and you would like to use it with your Arduino? Yes, you will search for libraries. So let's look for a library. MH set 19. Oh, there are multiple libraries. Well, let's pick the first one. All right, let's go to examples and MH set 19. Basic usage. Let's check out the basic usage. We need to define the pin, the RX pin. Oh, we don't have an RX pin yet, so let's connect the RXD to pin three. Receive pin is two, and our transmit pin is three. Our serial speed is 9600 turn auto calibration on then every 2000 milliseconds we read the ppm and the temperature so let's see eighty-four yeah I'm not too confident in these measurements. Outside, it should be between 300 and 400 ppm. I'm inside of the house, so it should be higher. Now it even drops to 50. Um, however, it reacts to my breath. So let's see. I keep talking into the sensor and the CO2 level rises. So clearly it reacts to CO2 levels. However, I guess the calibration is completely off. I do have a second one, so maybe I will try. Okay, so at least the temperature now makes sense. However, it is completely off, so it's not calibrated. And the question is, how can we calibrate them? It looks like there are three options. The first one is to use the HD pin and by pulling it low for seven seconds, it is then calibrated to 400 ppm, which should be outside. And you should do it during night. And you can also use the software method, which is running this sketch right here, calibration sketch. Disconnect the sensor from the device afterwards to avoid recalibration or you use auto calibration and the sensor will adjust itself over a few weeks actually, according to the lowest observed CO2 values each day. If I mount it into the smart home sensor, then auto calibration will be great because I don't want to unmount it every week and put it outside to calibrate. So this is great if the auto calibration works. I will try now to calibrate it. I will go outside and I will use the method where I connect the pin to ground. So I connect this HD pin here to ground. Let's see if that works. Just for testing, I will, I will try to do it inside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So now it thinks that this is 400 ppm, but this should be done outside, of course. So I will go outside, I will calibrate and I will see. I'm outside 
and I will now recalibrate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is now my new 400 ppm. All right. So I brought the sensor back and it should be calibrated to the outside value. And now I measure 570, which would mean that it's excellent, right? Okay, I don't really trust it. So <laughs> let's let's wait a little bit longer. It's still increasing. Okay, we're now still excellent. And we have a ventilation system in the house. So I guess the CO2 level shouldn't be too high. Let me know in the comments down below if you already have some experience with the sensors and maybe is there a better CO2 sensor than that one for a reasonable price? Because this one is around $20. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of Arduino. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.